Hello creatives and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be diving in to Illustrator on the iPad. I have it right here and we're going to learn how to vector an image. A lot of times you will be utilizing these skills for clients or if you are in a in-house design team, if you're part of that, then you will be vectoring a lot of stuff. Utilize the letter profile here. We're going to keep it in RGB. Add a photo. Most of the time that you are going to be vectoring items is going to be from a photo or from an image from a client. So I pulled this image right here. It is of the new Apple iMac. We're going to go ahead and work on vectoring this image. Now, what does it mean to vector? Vector basically means any image that is made up of points and lines. More specifically, made up of points that are connected by lines. So any workable image that can be completely editable and remain editable. I'm going to show you how we do that. Go ahead and thumbs up this video if you do like this type of content. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I make a lot of videos all about design and illustration. I do a lot of videos in the Adobe programs. Let's dive in. We're going to focus mostly on this. Whoops, I turned the canvas. <laughs> I'm going to focus mainly on this middle one here. So we're going to start off very, very simple. This one here, it is made up of very simple shapes. They're mostly rectangles. Pull up a new layer. For that layer, I'm going to select the pen tool. Whenever you vector something in Illustrator, you are going to be using the pen tool. The pen tool can be a little bit of a difficult or tricky tool for most people. So if you do struggle with using the pen tool, go ahead and check out my video that I created all about the basics of the pen tool. It's called Pen Tool Basics for Illustrator on the iPad. I will link it for you. And that way, if you struggle with the pen tool, go ahead and watch that first and then come back to this video. So with the pen tool, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. We are going to start at basically any corner. Rectangles and squares are so much easier to vector than circles because you have defined edges. So I'm just gonna start at an edge, make sure that my fill color is null, which means it doesn't have one by selecting the fill color and then selecting null. And then my stroke color, just for fun, let's make it the same color as the lightest shade here. Click and drag it for that color. We're gonna save the color into our swatches by just tapping the plus sign in swatches. That gives us our stroke color. So I'm gonna zoom in even further. And yes, arguably you can use the shape tools to create this for you. However, we're using the pen tool because we all need some practice with the pen tool, even me. So let's keep going here. We have the pen tool selected over here on our left toolbar. Start vectoring. Vectoring is mainly the process of placing points and connecting those points together to create a workable shape or image. I'm going to work this by doing the outer edge, not the inner one, because we can just duplicate that outer edge or the outer shape later. I'm going to zoom in way close in here, about 680%. Tap and drag. There we go one edge. And because rectangles and squares are so easy to vector, you don't need very many points. This one does have a rounded edge, so you only need an endpoint really close to the edge, and then we will compensate for that curved edge there in a moment. Tap and drag. I'm just moving across the artboard here with my two finger drag. Whoops! Now, if you messed up, it's okay, don't worry. All you gotta do is just tap the undo or double tap finger the screen to undo your mistake. And then you can redo it because with the iPad, no paths are broken, which is amazing because it was such a pain to have to reconnect your paths and reselect it. Now you don't have to do that. And then to close the shape, just click and drag over that original starting endpoint. Now I'm going to choose this point selection tool, the second tool in the left toolbar. Modify my points here so that they are all in line. And by in line, I mean in line with the shape that we have here. And now we have 
a workable path. So let's flip the stroke and the fill color, just like so. And you can see that we have a really good start at vectoring this image. Duplicate the image and make it that darker blue color. Let's flip that fill again. Double tap outside anywhere to deselect. Select that dark blue color. Press the plus sign to add it to your swatches panel. I'm just gonna give it a null since we don't need it yet. Tap the, the workable path that you just created, that you just vectored, and we're gonna swap the fill and the stroke. There is a quick selection toolbar that pops up right here and select the duplicate selection here, as you can see. And then I'm going to move this down it looks like nothing happened, so let's go ahead and swap that swatch color to that darker blue. There we go. Let's see, what is the distance? It's not very far. So let's just put this right up to here, like so. Double tap to deselect, and then we can line this up. So this makes it a little bit easier. You can kind of get away with doing this quite quickly. Go into our point selection tool, which is the second tool on the toolbar. Modify this shape by just clicking and dragging our points. Whoops, wrong point. Again, either click the undo button or double finger tap the screen to undo. I select the, the wrong point. There we go. And that gives you that fun gradation there. So we have the beginnings of a vectored shape. Keep in mind, when you are vectoring a shape, you want the shape to be able to be workable no matter what. You never want to flatten an image. For instance, in this case, you never want to rasterize or flatten the image to take away the workable endpoints. You want a vector image to be completely workable and editable no matter what. Having the ability to customize this later is the entire point of vectoring. Not only that, but if you were going to go and print something that you are vectoring, then you would want it to be in a high resolution and you want it to be able to be workable because once you rasterize something, it does take away from the integrity of the image itself. Not to mention it compresses the image. So you want it to remain a fully editable image so that way you can print it at whatever scale you would like. By the way, this document is at 300 DPI. That is a extremely high resolution. So if you did want to print this, you could, and it won't be grainy and fuzzy. However, if you're doing multiples of these, for instance, if you wanted to vector every single iMac here, you would need to have all the paths workable. Go back into vectoring the rest of this. I am going to create a new layer. To turn off that first layer that we just put those two shapes down on by clicking the eye on the layers panel and you see it disappears so that we can work on this section here. I'm gonna zoom in really close here. And we're gonna vector this. So go ahead and choose your pen tool. You can apply this to anything or any image that you want to make workable. So that way you can change it, modify it, change the aspect ratio of it or what have you. Again, I'm gonna start with the outer edge, which is going to be right across here. Let me zoom in a little bit further, about almost 1300%. Tap and drag, tap and drag. I have my fill um, full. <laughs> I have my fill full. So let's swap that by tapping those double arrows so that way it goes to the stroke. That way we can see where we're going. You always wanna be able to see where you're going because if you end up having your fill color on instead of your stroke color on, you're gonna end up covering half of what you're working on and you won't be able to see the rest of the shape. So always make sure that the stroke color is on, not the fill. Swap that stroke for the fill, but first I'm going to choose the correct fill color. There we go. Now we have a very simple vectorization of this iMac. Being able to vector is definitely a key component of design and illustration. So I'm going to work on this shape here. So it's very simple. Select your pen tool, and it only requires four points on either side of each hill, if you will. Reconnect the shape together at the original endpoint. Now, because I did not pull my handles enough, I'm gonna choose that point selection tool once again, and then pull the handles into place like so. There we go. Flip this 
brushstroke for the fill, we are going to do something quite fun. Choose our outer shape, flip that stroke for that fill again, select the shape we just created. I'm gonna swap that fill color for you so you can see it better. Hold down the constraint and select the bigger shape. Go to our Pathfinder tool here and we're going to do a minus front and it just knocks it out. There we go. So let's see what this looks like now with all the layers turned on. Ah, looks so much better. And now this is completely editable. So you can select everything here, choose your point selection tool, and you can see all the points that make this a completely editable path. That is what you want for a vector image. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Now you know how to go about vectoring an image, any image you would like, and be able to use it and print it at any scale that you would like. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already, and subscribe, and I will see you soon, creatives.